this video we will be replacing the sash on an Anderson casement window that's a crank operated window although your window may be a different size the procedures apply exactly the same basic hand tools screwdriver power drill gloves and a shop vac as well as some silicone lubricant and a soft wire brush or a nice rag are recommended. Please use extreme caution. You'll be working with dangerous items such as broken glass. You'll be working possibly at heights above ground level. And although using this procedure in this video, you will not be using a ladder, you will be hanging halfway out a second story window. So please use caution. Hi, my tube friends. So today we're doing an Anderson sash, one of the uh, sashes with the crank at the bottom. This one is a C4 size, but these same procedures are going to go for any size on this type of Anderson sash. So just uh, sit back a couple of minutes, watch the vid, and when it comes time to do your sash, you're not going to have any trouble. It's a real easy job. You just need a minimal of tools. Uh, Anderson's a, a great company. They got a great warranty. Uh, it's 20 years on the parts, so if you have any issues with your window, like fogging in between the glass, or like an unexplained crack, uh, like from uh, just like a crack from corner to corner or from side to side, where nothing obviously hit the glass, uh, that's caused by like pressure differentials on hot sunny days because in between the two glasses a vacuum and uh, the glass can actually crack and that's a warranty issue so just call them up uh, and file your warranty and in, in like three days you'll have a brand new sash um, the first 10 years I believe they cover the labor so they'll actually come over and install it for the next 10 years of the 20 year warranty you gotta install it yourself or call a handyman like me to install it but that sash right there that I just showed you is like a $280 sash just for the part. So it's well worth calling up and, and claiming your warranty on it. And, uh, and uh, you know, the big issue is the fogging in between the glass. That's because you lose the seal, you lose the vacuum in between the two glass, which is an insulating property. And then regular air gets in there, atmosphere, and it starts condensating. And then you get mildew in there and stuff. It's really disgusting. So, uh, so this is a real easy job. Um, we're just going to finish up here, so just watch, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. And it, again, this goes for any size of this style Anderson. So a small one or a bigger one or this one, it's the same procedures for this style Anderson, any size glass. As a matter of fact, it's the same hinges, it's the same exact parts. Uh, it's just different size sashes, so nothing, nothing is going to be different except the size of the glass. Now, I just wanted to show you from out here, when I boarded up this window during the storm a couple of weeks ago, I cut the plywood to the same exterior dimensions of the sash, and if you could see as I zoom in, uh, the three screws on the bottom, and then up the side, and then the top, those are like, it's three quarter inch plywood I used, and those are like inch and a half drywall screws that I just, I pre-drilled in the plywood so that I could mount the screws halfway through the plywood before I climbed up the ladder. Then I climbed up the ladder with the screws already halfway mounted in the plywood. I held the plywood in place and with my power driver, I just shot the screws right through the thin aluminum of the Anderson frame. Um, and that's how I boarded up the window and I just wanted to to bring everybody aware of how to, to board up a window without doing damage to the rest of the frame or to the house, because we're replacing this whole sash right now. And, uh, and as we replace the sash, the broken glass and the frame with the screw holes in it will be replaced. So uh, there's no additional damage. Dubbing in some audio as needed. We're removing the screen right now on these Andersons. There's a couple of clips you pop open and screen pops right out. This screen actually is damaged from the incident. There's a small hole in it and the new screen is on order. 
back to the broken glass. Now, I was here on a previous occasion, and I removed all the big shards of broken glass. I cut around the edge with a little hand glass cutter wheel and, uh, and then removed the big shards. But um, if you don't have access to such a tool, putting the, cleaning out the big loose shards and putting the screen back up would protect while you're waiting for the new one. That's the locking screw I'm pointing at. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. And that prevents the, the sliding shoes of the window from coming completely out of the track. You have to remove those two locking screws, one in the top, one in the bottom. And once you remove those locking screws and remove the arm clips, the window will slide right out. Those are the arm clips I'm showing you. You stick a screwdriver in them and just slide them back. I'm going to show you that in a minute actually doing it, but I'm just pointing to them now. There's three of them on these Andersons. Two on the bottom, one on the top. Moving right along, here we're going to actually take out the locking screws. As you note, I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver. And these screws have a little bit of a special shape to them, so you don't want to lose them. But if you did lose them, it's not a big deal. You could use any, like, round head, uh, three-quarter inch wood screw. But you definitely want to. You can see the head has a little bit of a straight up and uh, thick on the sides, and that's to keep the nylon sliding shoes in the track where they belong. This is a shot of the two locking screws. And I set them aside where I'm not going to lose them. In this little clip, I'm actually unlocking the tabs on the operator arms. Again, there's three tabs. And I'm just sticking a regular screwdriver and pushing them back very gently. It doesn't take much effort. There you go. That's unlocked. And then you could take the arms off the pivot pins. There's two arms on the bottom and one in the top. Now, at this point, when the pivot pins are off, this window could come right out. So you definitely want to use caution on a windy day. I'm going to take the whole old broken sash out. So I'm putting gloves on to protect my hands because there is broken glass still left in this sash. Now, right there, I'm just cranking the operator, the one arm that's still in the operator. I'm cranking so it's out of my way. And I'm using the shop vac to pick up some shards that uh, have become exposed now that we've uh, removed some arms and stuff. Um, when this window broke, there were shards all over the room. All right, so see, I'm try to keep the window straight as far as up and down. Uh, and this window was giving me a little trouble because there was a lot of dirt in the tracks. And how I overcame that issue is once I realized what was going on, which is right about here, um, I cleaned up the tracks with a wire brush and I sprayed them with some silicone lubricant. And then the window came out really easily. So, uh, But as you can see right now, the window is really not attached to anything except those shoes that are in the locking track, top and bottom. So uh, like I said, if it had any kind of windy day, this thing would be flapping around. And I would think that uh, it would not be a good time to work on a project like this. And you would wait for another day. So now I'm using a silicone, which is a dry lubricant, because that's what you should use on all your windows and doors. Never use any kind of WD petroleum-based product, because it just leaves big oily residue stains. And that was the actual problem with this one. In the past, someone had sprayed WD on it, and it attracted all kinds of dirt and got all gunky and actually totally jammed up the tracks. So once I cleaned up the tracks, you can see the window's really moving easy now. Once I cleaned them up and sprayed a little silicone on there, the window was out in like 10 seconds. Now, uh, the bottom is actually off right now, so you got to really hold on to this baby because uh, if it just slips out of the top and you don't have a grip on it, it's falling. 
and and I'd like to say too that if at that point the window did want to fall because I didn't have a good grip on it, I'm letting go of that thing. I'm not trying to catch it because it, when you do try to stupid stuff like that, like trying to catch it as it's falling, you're going out that window and you're falling with the window and it's not worth it. That's a shot of the nylon shoe at the bottom that fits in the track. There's a shot of the top nylon shoe. And those are what slide in the actual track, and that's what got all gunked up with the old WD stuff. Now I'm going to remove the hardware because the new sash does not come with hardware, and that's the big trick with these Andersons is you got to swap the hardware from the old window to the new window, and then you just install. It's not a big deal. So there's three screws on this shoe bracket, and the whole bracket comes off. And I'm saving the screws to use over, and I'm saving the hardware. Now this is like the retaining lug. There's two screws on that. And that comes right off, saving the screws. Now we go to the other end. There's three screws holding the top shoe bracket on. Simply remove them. Save the screws and set the hardware aside. Now, I'm also going to clean up all this hardware before I put it on the new window just with some all-purpose cleaner and a rag. You can see my video on making old T-shirts into rags if you want to make some good rags. And I'm going to clean the metal part and the nylon shoe parts. And now we're going to go and remove the uh, clips, that the locking clips, and there's two. And there's two screws in each clip. And we're just going to back them out and set them aside. Now at this point, we basically have all the hardware off the old sash. And we're ready to start preparing the new sash. And I'm just finishing up with that last locking clip here. And I'm also showing you, like, the orientation of them and where they actually are in relation to the window. Now we're laying down the old sash on its front because I'm actually going to get the old sash, bring it on in, and lay it right on top of the new sash. Now there's the frame, and it's very dirty because, like I said, someone had sprayed WD. So I'm going to get in there. I'm going to clean up all of that frame, the inside of the frame and the tracks. Clean it really good with some all-purpose cleaner and a soft wire brush on the metal parts, like a bronze wire brush or a brass wire brush on the metal parts. In this little clip here, I'm just showing you the hardware we removed. The two shoe brackets, the two uh, uh, locking clips, and that one uh, retaining lug. And, of course, all the screws. We set them aside and saved them. Here in this clip, we have the all-purpose cleaner, the rag, and the soft wire brush that we're going to use to clean up all of this hardware and the inside of the window frame make it look brand new. These Andersons uh, clean up really nice. Uh, they're made to withstand years of weathering. And you can see here, everything's starting to look real Okay, shiny. so here's the uh, new Anderson sash. I just took it out of that box. It was double boxed. Uh, there's a little box inside the big box there with all those uh, styrofoam things on the corners and stuff. Here's the new Anderson sash. It has some protective plastic that we're going to peel off after we're done. And uh, basically what we have to do is uh, put the old hardware, because they don't give you hardware. So you take the hardware off the old one like we're doing. And the top, uh, the top slidey hinge, the bottom slidey hinge, the two latches, and, uh, and that keeper. And that's it. It's about uh, 20 screws. And, uh, and we're done. We're going to match the old sash... We're going to put the new sash right on top of the old sash, and we're going to match up where the hardware goes. So it's going to be like a minimal of measurements. I'll show you as we go along how we're going to do it. We brought the new sash in, and we laid it directly on top of the old sash. And the reason we do that is because we're going to use the marks in the old sash to match up 
where the hardware goes on the new sash. See the mark from the retaining bracket? And then I know exactly where the, the new retaining bracket's gonna go on the new sash. And I measure in from the corner the distance to the first screw, because that's all we really need is the first screw. Once the first screw is in, the second and third screw just go in the screw holes, so we don't have to measure for them. That's that corner. Here are the locking clips exposed on the bottom sash, and I'm gonna take my tape measure, and I'm gonna measure to the first screw hole. And I'm gonna transfer that measurement to the new sash, mark it, mount the bracket with the screw, and then the second screw is gonna go in the screw hole. We don't have to measure for that. So in these shots following, I'm gonna do exactly what I just said, and mount the new hardware to the new, mount the old hardware to the new sash. I'm measuring from the corner in to that first screw hole. Transfer it to the new sash. Mark with a pencil. Just a little dot's all you need. Double check. Always double check your measurements. Here we go. And then transfer to the new sash. Actually, the camera fell over. And uh, transfer, you can see carefully, double checking. And now, the last triple check. They always say, measure twice, cut once. So now I'm getting a screw, and I'm getting that bracket that belongs there. And I'm moving it until the pencil mark shows through the screw hole. Again, double checking. Pencil mark shows through the screw hole. I put the screw in my power driver. Oh, and I wanted to show you that you push down on it, and Anderson has given you that little right angle bend in it. That's as far as the up and down. You don't have to measure for that. You just measure the end and then push down so it's snug on the corner, and that's the position it goes in. And that's the reason I picked the camera up to show you that. Oh, I'm pushing down with my left thumb and I'm shooting the screw. Right through the vinyl clad into the wood that's underneath. Very minimal effort. Now that second screw, I don't have to measure for. The hole is right there, I'm just putting the screw in. It's very simple stuff with these Andersons as far as replacing the sashes. Now that bracket is done. We're gonna move to the next, which is that shoe bracket. And you drive the screws in until they're flush. Here's that shoe bracket. Now I'm gonna use the marks, the rusty marks left in the old sash to show me exactly where it goes. And this one actually has like a 16th of an inch overhang past the corner. So you could either use that as your measurement, which you could see I'm eyeballing from behind right now for that 16th of an inch overhang. The two bumps. Uh, and you also want to make sure that those little bumps are down on the bottom. So again, you push down on this one and that gives you the up and down. Or you could measure to the first screw hole like I'm doing here, from the corner to the first screw hole and mark it. Or, you can use the eyeball with the overhang from the back side, it's about a sixteenth of an inch, and push down on it. And double checking again with the ruler just to make sure. Make sure everything's in the right position. Push down. So it's snug against that flat part. And then drive your first screw. And the next two screws just go in the screw hole. You don't need to measure for it. And as you can see, this the Anderson window replacement sash project progresses right along. As long as you double check it and making sure that that first screw goes in the right spot. You won't have any trouble with anything. There we go, that is all done. Now we're gonna move to the, to those side uh, locking lugs. 
And for this, I switched to a tape measure because the distance is a little longer than that little hand rule I have. And I, I wanted to make a note here, and this is just to show you, like, duh, which way does it go, this way or that way? So I go to the other window that's still in, and I just take a look which way the lug is mounted. Which is a nice thing about windows, because there's usually two, and you could usually go to the other one to compare. So again, I'm measuring from the corner to the first screw hole on the old one, and then I transfer the measurement to the new one. And just double-checking orientation. And this one, as far as the left and right, it gets mounted just right down the center. And, uh, and I actually screwed up a little later in the video, you'll see. I put one of these a little too far off to the side. And it was interfering with the locking mechanism that's on the frame. So the simple fix is I shimmed the locking mechanism with a 1 8 inch inch dowel which is basically like a toothpick I shimmed the lock and and that took care of that problem but I actually did screw this up later on in the video but I didn't edit it out I wanted to show everybody now there's also a little indexing mark that Anderson gives you that is just about right but you still want to double check and not go totally with their mark although you may indeed end up with it that we transferred all our hardware we're getting ready to install the sash so I'm bringing those two locking screws over close along with the screwdriver because once I have one of these shoes in and I always try to put the top shoe in first I want to lock it because I, I don't want it falling out on me while I'm trying to slide the other shoe in so it's very important when you get the first shoe in you get that screw in right behind it and I've also sprayed those tracks with silicone after I cleaned them up and you saw how shiny they were this window is going to glide like butter when it's in there because it's clean and silicone now I'm putting my gloves on because I'm picking up the old sash now we're done with it and taking it outside for the garbage and all my little monster handy men and handy girls out there I want you to always wear gloves when you're working with stuff like broken glass now at this point I'm peeling the plastic protective film off the outside before I put it in. The inside I'm leaving for now, but the outside's a little tough to get to once the window's in, so you want to peel it off before you try to get that window in there. Now I'm getting that sash, and I'm, I'm going to be careful here because this is a second floor window, and I want to be safe as we can. I'm going to be halfway hanging out. I don't want to fall. Now I've Got that top track in by rotating that nylon shoe in the correct orientation, and it just slides right in there. Now I put that locking screw in, and now I can let go of the window, and I know it's not going to fall out because the shoe is in and the locking screw. Then I come to the bottom, and I slide that screw in. It's important to keep the window oriented straight up and down. If one, the top shoe is like all the way to the right and you're trying to get that bottom shoe in, it's not going to work. You have to like bring the top shoe back to push against the locking screw so it's straight up and down. Then the bottom shoe will slide in. Now you mount your arms. You just push them in and then lock the clips by pushing with a screwdriver. It's very easy. So you just kind of put your screwdriver blade and push. You can see I'm doing it one-handed here. It's not difficult. But, of course, I've cleaned all of this stuff up, and it's not all gooey and gunky anymore from that old WD. Um, so it's very easy to just clip them in. And the top one, I had to bump a little left and a little right. I had to, like, fist bump it uh, to get it in just in the right position for that top one to clip right in there. Um, you don't need any force for this stuff. It, it, if it's not going right in, it's not in the right position. And just move that shoe part around until it gets in the right position. And then it'll just clip right on there. And then you can lock it in uh, with your screwdriver. You see, I'm bumping and I'm moving and I'm bumping. And there it is. It just popped in. Now I take the screwdriver and just lock it. Now, basically, this window's in. So we're going to crank it and close it. And it was at this point that I discovered I put that bottom locking lug, that right there, where is it, 
right there. That locking lug is actually in the okay, wrong position. Okay, so we're done. We're going to peel the plastic off. I just wanted to show you one thing. I screwed this up a little bit, and I had this, like, too far over this way. You can see it's not really centered compared to this one. It's more that way. So what I did is on this, you could see the little... It's a little eighth inch dowel behind there. I'm going to trim this off so no one notices, but I shimmed this hinge out a little bit. And, uh, problem solved. Window latch is nice. Okay, we got to peel the plastic off, clean up our work area, and we're done. And, uh, there it is after I trimmed the, uh, there it is after I trimmed the dowel off. Okay, beautiful. So, not everything, uh, there it is after I trimmed it down. Not everything works out the first time, but the reason you're watching my videos is I tell you how to handle problems as they come up. All right, so here's the old one. We put it in the box. A new one came in. We labeled it for the sanitation guy so it doesn't get hurt. And we taped it up so no kids mess around with it. And we're going to put it in the ladies' trash so her garbage guys pick it up because I don't want to cart it back to my place. Um, there it is. It's the one on the left. Beautiful job. Now, um... You can still see on the house that big scratch up there and this scratch and this mark over here is from when the big tree fell and did all the damage. I've replaced that light and the window frame and I fixed the front porch light. And uh, now um, there's plenty of handyman videos on, uh, on YouTube, but you know, they all work out fine in the end and everything fits and perfect, you know, nothing ever happens. But I show you how to correct the screw ups like that little hinge clip. You know, they would have edited that out in anyone else's video, but I go with it, and I show you how to deal with stuff like that. All it took was a little shim and two minutes, and uh, the window works fine as it's designed to. No one's ever going to notice it, and it's a perfect job. So, uh, you know, that's why you're going to, like, right now, sub to me and, re and, you know, leave me a comment and tell me how great I am, and, uh, and give me a thumbs up. So, uh, hey, you know... That's YouTube. All right, here comes the husband. He's the guy with the check. So I'm going to get paid in about two minutes, about like 1200 bucks. So, uh, good deal. Okay, there it is, uh, 1123. That was uh, from them. But there's other stuff. It's not just a window. You know, it's an $80 check. There's a hundred dollar check. There's a two seventy five. I get them all. Go to the bank on Thursdays. Um, all right, so there we go. Not only showing you how it's done, I'm showing you how to handle when you fuck it up, which I do quite often. But uh, you know, if you got the skills, you don't gotta worry about that, cause you uh, you just work right through it. Alrighty, so once again, thanks for watching the Handyman Zone. You know, I'm Dino. I'm always here to help my YouTube friends. Um, I ask one thing of you, though, is sub to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if you want. But the thumbs up and the subbing, what that does is it helps everybody out. Because you know I'm an expert handyman and I got plenty of skills that I'm willing to teach everybody. And when you sub and when you like me, which is the thumbs up, it knocks me up in the rating. So the next user that comes along and puts in the YouTube search engine, like let's say replace Anderson Sash, because I got a couple of more subs and I got a couple of more likes because of you guys, I get knocked up higher in the in the ranking. So they'll see me before that, and you know they're gonna get the best help from me. So really, you're helping out everybody. Uh, and it, it's no sweat off your back. I mean, it's just like a little electronic signal somewhere in YouTube servers that uh, that you sub to me does nothing to you to your channel or your account or anything. And, and that's another thing. If you're not a YouTube subscriber yet, sign up right now, man. YouTube is like the only thing happening on the internet. And uh, and if you're not subbed, uh, if you're not a, um, a YouTube account. You know, you're not here nowhere on the internet. So uh, just, you know, click sign up now. And in two minutes, you're going to have your own YouTube account, your own channel and everything else. And then you'll be able to sub to me.
All right. So if you're not, if you're a holder and you're not sub, sub. If you're not an account holder, sign up and then sub. Make, make me your first sub. See you later. Enough of that.